Hey guys, I'm Josh from Lazy Acres. Thank you for tuning in. We are saving the world here one trailer at a time. Today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna do a Springdale orientation, how-to video, kind of walk-through video, how to operate a Springdale. Uh, maybe you just bought one, you wanna kind of watch this before you come pick up your trailer. Maybe you've bought someone somewhere, one of these somewhere else. Uh, maybe you just wanna know what it's gonna to take to kind of maintain a trailer like this. So this video is for you. Uh, we do have William Kennedy on the camera today. He's gonna to try to keep me on the straight and narrow, make sure I'm saying makes sense. Uh, so I'll be checking in with him as we go. Now, uh, right here at the front, we have a up and down with our jack. It's listed right here, pretty easy, up and down with the trailer. You have an on and off for the light switch. In behind here, you, you have a plug you can pull out and you can crank up and down your jack manually. If you have, a, if you have an issue with a battery or power or something like that, you can still do, still do that manually. With basically all the Springdales, even the Springdale Minis, you should be using some kind of weight distribution, uh, whether it's like a Centerline TS or a regular Husky. Uh, we've done a video on that, so Chris, if you wanna put that description down below or that, that link down below so you can see how to put that in on and off, but you should be using some kind of weight distribution. To uh, finish up the hookup process, so there's four things that make you legal. You have a ball that comes underneath here into the coupler, that locks on top, and then there's a pin. All right, the pin goes in there. That's the first thing to make you legal. Then you have chains, all right? These need to go underneath the hitch, and they need to crisscross. So the chain from this side has to come over here, and vice versa, and they hook up onto the truck. Now, if the trailer, the reason that they, they crisscross is if the trailer ever becomes unhooked, uh, the, the trailer is actually gonna cradle here in these chains. So the fact that they're crisscross is important. Then, <clears throat> We've got ourselves our breakaway cable. This has to hook up to the truck with a separate link. So that's gonna hook up, boom, like so. We'll just wait for the track to go by. Back out of here, third thing is this breakaway cable. So this hooks up to the truck or, tra or, or vehicle with a separate link. And the idea here is if the trailer ever becomes detached, it pulls out that breakaway, locks on the brakes on the trailer so the trailer doesn't follow you down the road. It's just gonna stop and stay in place there. Then you have your lights. <clears throat> your lights here are a seven-way connection, which means you have to have a brake controller in the vehicle you're using to pull it with, and that will plug into the back. So four things, lights, breakaway, chains, and the pin, all right? So those things make you safe and, and legal to go down the road. Then we have our propane hookup here. This, this tank right here is a brand new tank. It's empty, but I went and grabbed a, uh, a propane tank off a used trailer with propane in it. So we're gonna put this on. That lifts up, the little collar here goes down, we tighten this. The tighter this is, the safer it is, so make this, make, make this nice and tight. Bring it down, and then this is a QVC valve, so this goes on righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Thread that on, Will's having a hard time with this this morning. Um, <clears throat> now, whichever tank this switch here is pointing at, this black switch here, is the tank it's drawing off of. Once that tank goes empty, it's automatically gonna start drawing off of this tank, but you'll know this tank's empty because there's a little red line here that pops up. It's, it has propane now, so you won't see it, but uh, basically once this tank goes empty, that will turn red, it will automatically start drawing off of this tank. Then what you can do is you can flip this over to that side, disconnect this tank while this one's still running, go get it filled, bring it back, put it on. Then when this tank goes empty, this line's gonna turn red again because like the, the switch is pointing towards there. And uh, it'll automatically start drawing off this tank. Just kind of back and forth like that, all right? Um, some people will just leave the one tank on and then uh, with, and then when they run out of propane, they know they have to go fill the tank. That's There's some wisdom there. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is the tank that has propane that we're gonna show stuff with today. So I've got this over here. We've got this tank turned on now. Now, when you open up your propane tank, you shouldn't just like fire it open, you should open up slowly. Right on, so we got the propane on at this point. Our battery's in behind here. When this comes from Lazy Acres, it's gonna have a battery in a box that goes around it. But uh, on these Springdales, black is negative, red is positive. All right, so you can see what's going on there. There is no battery disconnect, so um, uh, basically, uh, if you're not using the trailer, all right, and it's just sitting in the driveway, not plugged in at home, you're gonna take off the negative lead, okay? That way the propane detector, the radio inside won't slowly draw down your battery and you won't come back to a dead battery. If the trailer's plugged in, it's fine. You can leave it hooked up, but if the trailer's sitting around in storage, not plugged in, you wanna make sure you disconnect your battery. The other thing with your battery is you gotta make sure you take it inside for the winter. Don't, um, 
Uh, don't store it on a concrete floor. Uh, ideally, you put it somewhere that's you know above freezing, right? So that the trailer doesn't, uh, that the, the battery doesn't freeze uh, while it sits there all winter. So take the battery inside and make sure you disconnect the negative lead if you're not using the trailer. Then uh, propane cover is easy peasy. That's 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 pretty slick there. Uh, our storage here is pretty straightforward too. You want to make sure you lubricate these locks with like a dry, dry kind of lubricant, like a Teflon or, a, or uh, something like that. They'll keep things nice and moist for you. The locks and the uh, uh, the foam latches here. We have two kind of water systems here. The freshwater tank is this one right here. So basically, you're going to put a hose into here. When the tank is full, it's going to splash back out. Okay, down below here. There's going to be some kind of drain for this. That's that guy right there. There's typically a cap on that that holds the water in. Right now it's open because it's winterized. But uh, uh, that cap there, or that drain there, will drain your freshwater tank. So basically, that there's a, there's a tank in the underbelly there that you turn the water pump on. It's going to pump the water from the tank to your taps. If you have water at the site, though, you're just going to take that hose and thread it in here. Whatever pressure you have on this line, is pressure you have on the trailer. You should be using a water pressure regulator to bring the pressure down from uh, uh, whatever it is at the site there to what the trailer can handle. So two systems, city water is if you have water at the site, fresh water is if you don't have water, you're gonna fill up as you enter the campground or before you leave home, that kind of thing. And then there's a water pump, which we're gonna talk about on the inside uh, to do. Now, uh, while we are down there, there is a manual override for the electric jacks on these Springdales. So some of these Springdales will have a manual jack that you just bring them down, up and down. This one is electric jack and the switch is on the other side. We're gonna to get to it. But if you need to bring these up manually, there's a, uh, a crank that goes over top of here and you can bring these up and down manually. Uh, key word here is stabilizer jacks. They're not leveling jacks, so they're not meant to lift the, the trailer. So when you go to level your trailer, you're gonna go uh, to your site, you're gonna back up onto the site. Let's say we're low on one side over the other. We're gonna pull ahead on that low side put a piece of two by six down, drive up on that piece of two by six, and that's gonna level side to side. And I always just stick a level on the floor of the trailer here in the, in the baggage compartment, so it's nice and easy to see. Basically, we're gonna level the wheels first using boards or planks or something like that. Uh, then we're gonna take the truck off, pull the truck out of the way, and level it front to back with the front end jack. Then, once we're level side to side, front to back, then you can put your stabilizers down, and just take the bounce out of it, okay? Uh, Coming down here, you do have a, a rack and pinion style system of slides on the Springdales. Uh, not much in the way of maintenance on this. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. If you want to be extra careful about it though, you can lubricate these seals, keep these nice and moist. Lubricate these wipe seals as well, keep these nice and moist. And the key, one key here is that when you're closing the slide and there's debris on top of it, you've got to make sure you sweep that off before you close the slide. Otherwise, it's going to get jammed in there and it's not going to seal. Um, so that's that. Uh, cool. All right. 30 amp service. Some of these spring deals will be 50 amp service, which just means they're prepped for a secondary AC. Most of the spring deals are 30 amp. There's the cord here. I've just got my uh, adapter to go from 30 amps to 15. What I can't use on this is the, uh, uh, the AC. You can basically use everything else but the AC when I go down to 15 amps. If you have a 50 amp trailer and you put a secondary AC on, to run both ACs, you have to 50 amps. If you're just running one AC, you can get away with just 30 amps. Outside shower, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, basically, there's a uh, shower head and a hose. Take the right key here. These Springdales, as far as I remember, are 751 keys, which is a fairly generic key. So you should have uh, two keys with you there, a, a, a man door and a baggage door key. So just hot and cold here, shower head, that's pretty easy. The, the key there though is that you winterize it. A lot of people forget to winterize their outside shower. That's a big deal. Now our sewer, this is, uh, a lot of people are scared of this part. It is pretty straightforward though. All right, so. All right. So basically you're gonna have a sewer hose with a fitting on it that's gonna twist onto there, all right? Just how the cap twists it off, this twists on. The small pipe is always your gray water. The big pipe is always your black water. They do label it up here for you nice and easy. Uh, and then they they, kind of, they make the handles here easy to see too. So gray handle means gray water. Black handle means black water. All right, let's stand up here so I'm not uncomfortable. Um, basically, if you have sewer at the site, 
Okay, so you got that sewer right there. You're gonna hook up your sewer hose, put that down into the, you know, connect that into the sewer itself. And you can leave your gray water open. Let that run out as it happens. That's your sinks and your shower. The black water though, you gotta make sure you leave that closed. If you leave your black water open, the liquids are gonna run out and the solids are gonna build up on the bottom of the tank. So you gotta make sure you leave the black water closed. Once they build up together, uh, like the weekend's over, the week's over, your tank is full, you're gonna come out here, close your gray water and open up your black water. It's key that you only have one open at a time. Um, and what's gonna happen then the, the uh, the salt and the liquid is going to run out all together. Um, like I said, you leave it open, it's going to eventually build up to the bottom of the toilet there. So key is one valve at a time. And if you have sewer at the site, even if, you, even if it's there, you leave the black water closed so it builds up together. Now let's say you're going to a dump station, so uh, you're going to empty the tanks as you leave the campground or when you get home or whatever. Uh, you're obviously going to leave them both closed until you get there. And then uh, hook up your sewer hose, put it to where the dump station is. Uh, typically people will open their black water first, let that rush out, close their black water when that's done, open to the gray. Now some of these Springdales, the larger Springdales, are going to have a black water flush kit. And that's what this guy is right here. The small Springdales won't have this, but the larger ones will. The key here is you hook up the hose to the spot right here, and there's a line that goes up and then down and flushes the inside of your black water tank. The absolute key is, when you turn the water on here, you have to have your black water open. If you leave the black water valve closed and you hook up water here, it's gonna build pressure in the tank. Doesn't sound fantastic, right? It sounds disastrous, okay? So make sure you have your black water valve open when you hook up the black water uh, flush kit. Basically, you run that for two or three minutes or so. Um, once the, the water starts coming out clean, you know your tank's clear. Awesome, does that feel clear, Will? Yeah, it's all right. Okay, all right. If you have cable at the site, you hook up a cable right to here and you'll have cable at the, at the TV. That's not satellite, just for cable. Uh, spare tire, uh, I guess this is t anytime, good as time any uh, to talk about the tires. There is a rating on the tire itself. It'll be different for every Springdale. You wanna make sure you have that tire pressure at that rating. Um, so this one says 65 PSI. Uh, so you have that 65 PSI at all times. The smaller Springdales will be 14 inch tires. And they'll have a lesser uh, PSI rating. So that's that. These are nitro fill tires. Not a, uh, like I wouldn't put nitrogen in these. This is not, these aren't race cars, okay? So um, I would just probably top these up with air. I wouldn't go through the trouble doing the nitrogen thing. But it's important that you keep the tires up to pressure. Usually the reason why you have uneven tire wear or you have bloats and stuff like that is because your tire pressure is not up to snuff there. These are steel rims on most of these Springdales. So you have to torque those lug nets down to 100 foot pounds. Uh, the first couple trips, when you come back home, you should make sure you torque them down again to, uh, uh, to make sure they're still at 100 foot pounds. Aluminum rims is 110. Uh, steel rims are uh, 100, uh, 100 foot pounds of pressure there. Um, all right, coming down this side here, these outside kitchens, uh, this one doesn't have like the, the burners or whatever, but it does have the uh, two cubic foot fridge. Um, uh, that's electric only, so it's not doesn't run on gas, doesn't run on 12 volts. This is a straight 110, so you have to be plugged in to use this fridge. Now, uh, your typical outside kitchen will have like a set of burners here that you'll pull out, and then there's a hose beneath the burner that you're gonna need to hook up to your uh, gas fitting. So this one doesn't have the burners, but it does have the gas fitting down here. So I can at least show you that part. So there's a little cap here. You gotta release this valve, take the cap out, take that gas hose, fit it in there, there you go. Then, once it's hooked up, then you turn the valve on, okay? If you try to operate this sleeve with the valve on, it doesn't let you do it. So you have to have this valve off, pull the sleeve back, hose in, bingo bango. Make sure you have this in for when you're traveling, to keeping the, the dirt and debris off there. But the uh, on the outside kitchen, the cooktop doesn't just magically work. You have to hook it up uh, and turn that valve on. Your, uh, your jacks, we talked about the, how to use those or how to manually do them. To do it uh, uh, standard, you just push the, the button here. They're both gonna come down together, okay? Once the first side touches, it'll stop. So yes, it stop there. The other side can come down. And then they're gonna lift simultaneously together. So they don't put more pressure on one side than the other. And like, like I said, they're just for stabilization, not meant to uh, lift the trailer up or nothing like that. So just bring it down to the touch. Maybe you bring the trailer up half an inch or so. 
With manual jacks, the same thing. Not meant to lift the trailer, they're just meant to stabilize the trailer. So you have a manual jacks on yours, crank them down until they're tight, and then maybe one full turn after that, just to take some of the balance out of the trailer. I have seen people, uh, like sometimes debris and stuff like that gets in here, and you hold the switch down for a while and it stays retracting. Um, so just make sure they're actually, when you take your finger off the button, the switch actually releases. Um, your smaller uh, Springdales will just have like regular stairs that fold underneath. You should lubricate those. Uh, your uh, bigger Springdales are gonna have this kind of secure step. Pretty straightforward how to use it. Just lifts up and inside. All right, locks into place here. To unlock it, you release it, bring it down. Now, you could get to a spot where, let's say we're on a hill here, and the stair is kind of holding up like this. That's not gonna work, right? So we can adjust the, um, uh, the height of these stairs by pulling out this pin here. You can see right there, too, okay? Pulling out that pin and then adjusting the legs up and down. One of the keys is uh, you wanna make sure when you go to close your door, that your door isn't gonna hit this uh, top part of the stair there because it'll start to bend your door. Um, all right, wheel bearings. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, you, you, your typical customer is just gonna have someone you know, do those for you, but you can pull out this cap here, and behind that cap, there's a black rubber cap, you can pull that out, and uh, squirt a shot of grease in at 6,000 miles, and then at 12,000 miles, you need to have it brought somewhere and have the bearings redone. So 6,000, that's a long time, right? So 6,000 miles grease, 12,000 miles repack the bearings. All right. Your outside receptacle here is attached to your GFI that's inside. So if that's not working, it's most likely because your GFI is kicked. Uh, you have an outside TV bracket here, an outside cable hookup here. Furnace vent, don't touch it. Don't put the screening over it. Just leave it alone. Right here is your water heater. Again, not much to do out here. You, nothing you're touching on a regular basis. The only thing you're really doing is when you're winterizing, you're taking out this plug and all the water is going to fall out. If you want to check out the video on winterizing, we did one last fall. Um, uh, this is an anode rod though, so uh, this needs to be replaced every year. When you take this out for the winter, you're going to see it looks all kind of ratty and stuff like that. That's because the water, the hard water is breaking down this anode rod instead of breaking down the tank. It's called a sacrificial anode rod. Should be replaced every year. Uh, it also acts as the, the drain plug for the, for the water here. But otherwise, you don't touch it. Okay, you don't touch the, um, you know, none of this stuff. Just leave that all alone. This does have an electric water heater on it. And there's a safety switch right here. So there's a switch inside. But that's a safety switch. So when you go to winterize your uh, water heater, I, I typically shut this off, and that way it doesn't get kicked on by accident when the tank's empty, right? Because if you run your water heater with the uh, uh, with the tank empty on electric, you actually burn out your element. So I, whenever I drain this plug here, I shut that off, and then I uh, make sure um, it doesn't get kicked on. If your electric water heater is not working for some reason, that's that could be one of the things, right? It could be because you've turned this off and forgot to turn it back on again. All right. But otherwise, don't touch this. Um, you do have a uh, range hood vent here. When you're traveling, these tabs go up to hold this uh, flap in place. When you're stationary, though, you pull these down. All right, and now the fan can blow out that flap and, and vent outside. If you leave the tabs down while you're traveling, it'll flap, 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 break. All right, so you gotta make sure you have those tabs up for when you're traveling. Um, and uh, down from your stationary there. Outside speakers, we're gonna talk about how to control those on the radio inside. Uh, there's a light switch to turn on and off your um, uh, LED lights on the awning. We're gonna operate the awning here in a second. Uh, maintenance items on the outside, like I said, lubricate your doors, lubricate uh, like the, the locks, lubricate the coupler, um, check your seals every 90 days. We've done a video on that. Maybe Christy throw that in there as well. Check your seals on the roof every 90 days. Really, really important. Um, awesome. Let's run the uh, the awning here. So we're going to talk about where the switch is in a minute here, but basically you just push extend. Awning is going to come out. I'm not going to hit that trailer, am I, Will? No. Yeah. Will's hair today, guys, it's perfect. It's great hair today. Basically, 
bring it out. That's as far as it goes. You bring it out until this balance here hangs down at 90 degrees. That's how you know it's out far enough. Uh, if you bring it out too far, you're gonna start uh, to roll it up backwards, okay? So um, it doesn't do any damage, but that means you've rolled up, you've, you've extended it too far. So just bring it out to that balance at 90 degrees. These are not meant for windy situations. If it blows off in the wind, it's not a warranty item, and it's not uh, meant for really rainy situations either. So if it's raining hard and it collapses the tube, uh, bend some arms, not a warranty situation, okay? Period. So wind or rain is not warranty. Now, if you want to, if you have a little bit of rain happening and you want to kind of run it off one way or the other, you can do that by pitching this area right here. So I'm compressing this arm here at this spot and that's lowering the, the fabric on this one side here to force the rain to run off this one way. Then when you go to retract the arm, you gotta bring it back up like that. Okay. Do you think I'm missing anything on the outside, Will? No, uh, one thing, how far do you think this is? I think that's eight feet. Eight feet? Yeah, okay. eight feet. Cool. Uh, that's a pretty standard uh, depth for an awning. Um, you don't think I'm missing anything on, on the outside? No, I honestly don't think so. Okay, cool. All right, we'll go inside then. Right on, guys, we're inside that Springdale. Uh, this is a 251 BHP, we don't care. We're just doing operational stuff. First things first, you got some safety things. Uh, your, your fire extinguishers uh, always beside the door there. That's for extinguishing fires. Um, then uh, you've got your propane detector slash carbon monoxide detector and that's this guy right here it's gonna be different locations in every floor plan but that's that guy right there one of the things about that that's plumbed right into the trailer so if your battery starts to get low over time that's gonna start to beep once every 30 seconds or so it doesn't have its own battery it's running off the battery in the trailer and then there's a, then there's a smoke alarm which is a separate detector and that's up near the top here, okay? This is not plumbed into the trailer. This has its own nine volt battery. You've got to keep checking this every six months or so, just like you would, I guess when you change your clocks, right? Uh, but check the battery, make sure that's still operating. Um, one of the things about the propane detector is if you're using like some weird cleaners, um, it may set that off as well. It's kind of a little sensitive to certain smells. So keep that in mind. If you have a propane leak, leak so that goes off, what you do is you go outside, leaving the door open and shut off your propane. That's that's all you do and then you call somebody, okay? And there's nothing really, I don't want you to sniff around for certain leaks or nothing like that. You get out of the trailer, leaving the door open and shut off your propane. Um, not really much to say here in the bedroom, okay? Just, you know, pretty straightforward. You have, you have storage underneath and stuff like that. Um, the fridge is a 12 volt fridge on these um, uh, bigger Springdales. So uh, you'll just have like a, uh, this is on off. All right. And then you can just go with one through five here. Okay. And then I was also going to control the freezer. Um, actually, I won't control the freezer. The freezer has its own control at the back here. Okay. And then when you're traveling, just make sure you have this closed and then this locked across so the door isn't open for you. The 110 receptacles, like the regular kind of receptacles, they're only gonna work if you're plugged into hydro, but these little 12 volt USBs are gonna run off the battery. So if you're done, if you don't have hydro on the site, you should still be able to charge your phone and stuff like that with those USBs. Um, over here, uh, we have our oven slash stovetop. This is the most dangerous part of the trailer. Uh, people use this as a heating appliance. So uh, what they'll do is they'll turn this on and then uh, go to sleep, and then they'll never wake up again. So it's really important that you just use this for cooking, um, and then when you're using it, you have the fan on, okay? Venting outside. Uh, if you, uh, yeah, it's just it's just really important that you, because you have an open flame, if you're gonna use this, use it for cooking, which is great, perfectly safe, but turn the fan on and do not use it for uh, heating. Um, so how we do that, we turn this to high, okay? And then I spark it. Okay, pretty straightforward, nice little blue flame. If that flame starts to look yellow over time, it's not getting right on uh, propane, not dangerous, but uh, you should have someone look at that. If you go try to light your fridge, sorry, your, your furnace or your uh, your water heater and you haven't lit your stovetop first, they probably won't light because there's air in the lines. So you should always light your stovetop first before you go try to light your anything else, all right? Now for the oven, you turn, you open the door, Turn this to flame right here, okay? And hold it in. As I hold it in, it allows the gas valve to open. Now I'm gonna use that same spark there over here. Now this is a very, very small gas line that goes here. So it may be that that takes a little bit to get the, the gas, gas through there. 
but you'll see there's a little blue flame, but halfway back, it's on the right-hand side of the burner. It's lit up now. Stay down there, Will. I'm going to let this button out, and then I'm going to turn it to whatever temperature I want. So I set it at 350, burner lights up. If I'm going to use this a few times during the weekend, I'll leave it on pilot, which is the flame switch over here. But if I'm just going to use it the one time, I'll just turn it off, and off it goes. If for some reason uh, the pilot light goes out, there's a thermal couple in there that will cool down and shut off all propane to the oven. So there's no, that's a very safe appliance. Um, right here, we, are, we have our TV location. Some Springdale's will have TV, some won't. The This guy right here, without any switches on it, that's the one for the cable. So if you have cable at the site, we put it on the outside. That comes out here. We go from here to the TV. If you're using the TV antenna, that's this guy right here. So on and off of that. Um, there, it is a digital antenna, so uh, it should pick up channels. Not really much in Canada, but maybe a little bit in the States. Um, on and off there, and then one tenner sounds cool. Right here, uh, this looks like a lot of fancy switches. It looks complicated. It's really pretty easy. In and out for the awning. We already did that. In and out for the slide. Um, we just push that, and out it goes. Now, when we go out, you hear that? clutching noise that lets you know it's all the way out or all the way in one of the keys here when we go to put the slide out out when we get to our site we want to look down beside the slide and make sure there's nothing jammed that's gonna get jammed in there and then again when we go to close the slide nothing's in the way and we make sure we swept off the roof of the slide if there's debris on there then we have uh, awning lights straightforward slide light entry light that's easy. Water pump. So this is if you filled up that tank on the outside. Right at the very beginning of the video, we filled up that tank. If you fill up the tank, we hit the water pump. It's going to pump water from that tank, which is empty right now, from that tank to your taps. If you're hooked up to the city water connection, you don't got to worry about that. That's only if you're using the freshwater tank and water pump. So turn that on. When it comes up to pressure, the water pump will shut off. You have both an electric and gas water heater on the big Springdales. So... Um, uh, the little minis just have a little gas uh, uh, water heater, same size, but uh, they'll only have the gas. So if you're going to run this on gas, easy peasy. Flip it on, okay? There's a little fault light that shows up here that lets you know the water heater has not lit yet, okay? If you come back here and that's still on like two months or two months, two minutes later, that's because uh, the water heater's not working, you're out of gas, something like that. So right now it's trying to light. See the light went out? And you can't hear it. I can hear it. It's actually lit up out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I uh, just turn that off when I'm done with that. And then electric, same thing. Flip that on and off. I don't have any water in the water system right now, so I can't run that. Now, uh, there's also a monitor panel so we can check the levels of each tank. So if I push black water right here, it shows empty. I push fresh water, it shows empty. Battery will read full because I'm plugged in. So you can just check and see how full your tanks are here. The black water, though, is going to lie to you. So you've just emptied your tank. You're going to come back in here, push this. So it'll say like two-thirds full. And that's because there's literal crap on the sensors uh, giving you a false reading there. So Blackwater is very unreliable. The gray, the galley, the fresh, the battery, all that stuff is reliable. Blackwater's not, though. All right. Um, you good with that, Will? Good. All right. Uh, different thermostats and different models. Uh, but they usually operate the same way. So we push mode. We're on fan right now, so I can control the fan speed, low or high. I push mode again. I go to cool. We're probably not above uh, uh, 75 degrees, so the AC won't come on. I push mode again. It goes to furnace. I imagine I am below 75. So I don't know if you heard the AC fan shut off, furnace fan come on. Uh, about 15 seconds from now, we'll hear like a sparking and then the roar of the flame, okay? So, um, we'll give that here a second. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera or not, but it's just kind of a little bit of sparking and then the roar of the flame. After I push, if I push mode, I shut it off, the flame goes out, and then uh, the fan will continue to run just to blow any excess heat. And then obviously, I can control the temperature here, right? I can go up or down, easy peasy. I think there is a way of changing it from Fahrenheit to Celsius, but uh, I'll let you read about that. Um, so that's off now, that should shut off. Remember how I mentioned the outside receptacle is attached to your GFI? That's this guy right here. So if you're, a couple of your 110 receptacles aren't working, it's probably because this is kicked. So it's hard to, yeah. To reset it, you just push this top button. 
If it's green, that means it's good to go. If it's uh, if that light goes out, that means that trip. So you can just reset that easy peasy. You got to make sure you leave water in the toilet bowl. All right, that keeps the stink down. If you don't leave water in the toilet bowl, the bathroom will stink. Uh, fan on off. That's easy peasy. Cool. Okay. In different floor plans, um, the fuse and the breakers are giving me different locations. Okay. There's no light here, but that's fine. All right. Your breakers are over here on your left hand side. They're labeled. Okay. So breakers have to do with the 110. So plug in. The fuse are over here on your right hand side, and they're also labeled. If a fuse is blown, there's a little red light that will light up right beside it. Okay. Uh, so check that if you if you have a problem with my water heater or my lights, whatever, come here, check that stuff first. Fuse on the right for the 12 volts, 110 on the left for the breakers. If a breaker's blown, it'll just look like that, okay? If a fuse is blown, there's a red light right beside it, they'll light up. Now, there's two fuses here, these two 40 amp fuses. You can't see them, but they're right beside the, the bank here of other ones. If the, uh, if you ever work your battery up backwards, or if you touch the pause of the lead, of the battery on the frame of the trailer, it'll kick those out uh, and break those fuses there. But there's no label and there's no light beside those. So if you have like a no 12 volt power whatsoever, even when you're plugged in, that's because uh, those two 40 amp fuses are blown. Um, okay. Can you think of anything else, Will? No, I think that's. Oh, radio. Oh, radio, yes. Yep. Yeah, cool. audio in and outside, I guess. Yep. So uh, you guys can play around with this. This is, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Um, the on button's always the hardest part to find. There that is in the middle there. You have a pop. You know, you can adjust the, uh, how do you say, uh, volume right there. Uh, zone A and zone B will be inside out speakers. You have an uh, uh, HDMI and an auxiliary in, or like a USB in kind of thing. So you can play around with that. It's just radio, there's no CD in here, but in and out for the speakers, pretty easy. Okay. Hold that to shut it off. Um, right on. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Please like the video if you appreciate us doing this kind of stuff. Uh, su subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this. You can email us here at sales at lazyacres.com or you can call us at 705-833-2539. Have a good day.